I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex. Today I'm here to bring you my top 10 games of 2020. This has obviously been a tough year for everybody, but there's still been a lot of great games that have come out and I hope they can help you get through the tough times. My number 10 for 2020 is MTV The Throwback Music Party Game. This is a great game for anybody who loves music and who grew up in the era when like MTV was actually cool and played music videos and didn't just make reality TV shows for 13 year olds, you know? If you don't like music, this is probably not the game for you. But if I was to do something like, uh, so tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Oh, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna. If that means something to you, you're gonna like this game. My number nine game of the year is Flying Goblin. This is a dexterity game where you have a little catapult and you are launching goblins into various rooms in a castle. Now there is almost no strategy to this game, so if that's what you're looking for, it's not the game for you. But boy, is it a silly, fun time. We, every time I play it, everybody's laughing, everybody's enjoying it. I mean, you're just all launching goblins. And I love to imagine little goblins just flying through the air, just Wee! My number eight game of the year is the great area control game, Jurassic Park. That's too high. <clears throat> no, that feels weird. I like Jurassic Park at two or three players. The four and five player version feels a little chaotic and random, wouldn't make my top 10 list, but the two or three player version is great. You are using chisels to break off parts of a slab of rock and then try to find dinosaur fossils. It's really, I keep going back to it. The game is called Jurassic Parts. So as a fun house rule, maybe if someone uses a line from Jurassic Park, they get a little bonus, you know? Like, hey, uh, how did you finish this dinosaur? Life finds a way. Extra turn, ha <laughs> ha! My number seven game of 2020 is Aquatica, which is the most beautiful game of the year, just like this is my most beautiful pose of the year. Aquatica would honestly win best artwork of 2020, but that's not the only reason to play it. It's an engine builder with a really unique mechanism. Each card comes with a series of benefits on them and you have to push up the card into a slot on your board to get each benefit as you push it up. It's really unique and cool. I love you Aquatica. My number six game of the year is the great party game by Felicia. If you are a hardcore gamer, this is not the game for you. But I play a lot of games with non-gamers, various family and friends. And by Felicia has probably been the biggest hit of the year amongst those types of people. So if you're playing with a lot of them, I really recommend it. It's sort of like reverse categories. Instead of having to write down something different than everybody else, you actually have to write down the same answer as at least one other person to stay in the round. And it's like funny and hilarious and provides a lot of memorable moments. Like uh, for instance, one time the category was summer and I wrote down pool and nobody else wrote down pool. Are you, are you kidding me? For summer, you didn't think of pool when you think of summer, when you, when you are in the middle of summer and it's like hot and you're not like, boy, I want to get in the pool. That never comes to mind for you. You don't think, when do you get into the pool if you're not getting in in the summer? A pool is meant for summer. That's why pools exist for summer. Summer pool, pool summer. Fine, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Yeah, well, your telephone is so old, it pronounces meme as meme. Ho oh. ho. My number five game of the year is the new party game Curmudgeon, which is actually a game I co-designed. I couldn't put it number one on this list, I'm not an arrogant narcissist, but I also had to put it somewhere on the list because I believe in myself. Good job. Curmudgeon is sort of like Mad Libs for silly insults. You were putting together keywords on various insult cards and then throwing them down on life cards. So if a life card would say something like teeth and maybe you had the insult words that said like weak and bread, 
you might be like, well, your teeth are so weak, they can't even bite through Wonder Bread. Ho ho! That's my impression of you and your weak teeth. Now, the focus of the game really is on, like, the ridiculous and the silly and not on the mean. The best thing I ever heard from a playtester was one time somebody said, you know, I don't think I'm funny, but this game made me feel funny. And I was like, oh my god, that is the greatest thing that anybody could have ever said about this game. Let me buy you some ice cream. My number four game of the year is the great dexterity game Sonora, which is the world's first flick and write, and it feels very original. It feels like a first. You are flicking discs into various regions of a, uh, of a board and then using those discs to score points in various scoring regions. And I, and I like the game because it felt oh, still going back more. Uh, I like the I like the game because it combines these sort of like epic big emotional table moments with this like quieter problem solving stuff. You know, when you're flicking the discs, your discs are bumping into each other. They're flying to different regions. Everybody's like, whoa, whoa, whoa! And then you're like, no, no, no! But now we got to be quiet because we got to fill out these puzzles and solve these problems and get the most points. So don't mess me up when I'm trying to figure out my points. You know, it's kind of like. Uh, it's kind of like combining the immature with the thoughtful, you know? You're like, hey, you want to pull my finger? That'll help us fill out this New York Times crossword. My number three game of the year is one of the new games in the Tiny Epic series. It's Tiny Epic Galaxies Blast Off. I love this game because there's a ton of, like, different, there's a ton of replayability with it because you're, you're rolling dice, you're sending spaceships to different planets, you're getting different benefits, those are helping you move up a track. Plus, the game comes with these like little miniature spaceships and I love spaceships, I always have since I was a little kid. So I like to play the game by like tapping into my childlike wonder and going like, three, two, one, blast up! Ah! Ah! Okay. Number three game of the year. My number two game of the year is the epic pirate adventure game Forgotten Waters. I love this game because um I I love this game. I forgot what I was gonna say. Hey, can I get a glass of water? Oh, I remember. Forgotten Waters is one of the greatest story games you will ever play. It's just this epic adventure that takes you all over it's it's such a fun journey it, it might not have that big of an ending but who cares because the journey is worth it and and that's like a metaphor for life right it's not about the destination it's about the journey right we've all read that on inspirational plaques and hallmark and things like that right i feel like that's a, that's like a that's like a philosophy thing right i'm a philosopher now philosopher grant before I move on to my number one game of the year, I just want to give a couple of quick shout outs to two honorable mention games that are very thematic. If you like playing games for theme, then check out these two. One is Rap Gods. It's one of the greatest games about the world of hip hop that you'll ever play. And two is Cinder, which is about setting up dating profiles and trying to date dragons. And to anybody who's ever online dated before, you'll find that game hilarious. Here we are, my number one game of 2020. Are you ready? My top game of the year is... Isle of Cats! Oh boy, Isle of Cats is so fun. In the game, you have a bunch of polyomino cats and you are trying to fit the most of them into your boat as you can. Now, I'm not a huge fan of cats in real life. I'm just very allergic to them. So if you ask me to fit cats into something in person, um, no thank you, all right? But if you tell me I can squeeze cats into something in make-believe, my answer is, let's squeeze some cats. <laughs> so that's it. That's my top 10 games of the year. Thank you so much for joining me for this. It's been a lot of fun, and I hope you've been playing a lot of great games, and I hope you get to play even better games in 2021. Bye!